Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss the labor aristocracy in communism. With that, I'll turn the subject to my grandson, Tristan. All right, thank you. So today we're going to be talking, as my grandfather just said, today we're going to be talking about Engels' idea of the labor aristocracy. So basically, Engels came up with this idea by observing kind of how the, the notions and the political positions of the working class. And he found out that, above, that, you know, contained within the upper crust proletarians, the upper crust working class, you know, the more wealthy, more well-off working class, he found that a lot of members of that well-off, you know, section of the working class actually had a lot of conservative political positions and had a lot of pro-capitalist political positions. And Engels was really confused by this. He's like, wait, you know, what's up with this? Because these people are actively getting, you know, exploited by capitalism and exploited by the bourgeoisie. So how come the upper crust and the more wealthy people within the proletarian class, how come the more wealthy of them are pro-capitalist, even though they're being exploited? And this is what led Engels to come up with the idea of the labor aristocracy. So basically, Engels says that um, among the upper crust, you know, wealthier proletarians, they're going to adopt pro-capitalist and conservative views because they work for, you know, relatively well-off, wealthy uh, bourgeois business owners. And these bourgeois business owners, obviously, they get their wealth from, you know, exploitation and exploiting poorer proletarians, more poor, downtrodden proletarians. And this is what allows them to become more wealthy. And more wealthy bourgeois, uh, members of the bourgeois class, will be able to pay their workers more to kind of disincentivize, you know, strikes, you know, um, business revolts, you know, stuff like that. So when workers are paid more, they're basically, you know, going to be less incentivized to revolts. They're going to be less incentivized towards They'll revolution. have total control, total control over them by increasing the allowances. Yeah, basically. So Engel says that when these, you know, upper crust proletarians are paid more, then they kind of realize that, hey, I'm getting paid more and I'm able to live like a comfortable, well-off life because these poorer proletarians are getting exploited. And, you know, I'm getting exploited too, but I'm still able to will live, you know, a comfy, uh, in a comfy, you know, kind of existence, right? So it doesn't really matter to me that I'm getting exploited because I'm still able to have a, you know, very high quality of life. So I'm going to adopt conservative positions and pro-capitalist positions to kind of preserve the system that's allowing me to be well off and allowing me to have a high quality of existence and then also, you know, keep the people that are supporting the people, the bourgeois owners that are giving me the high quality of ex existence. The upper middle class, basically. Yeah, the upper middle class. Mm -hmm. I'm going to support capitalism so that these lower proletarians keep getting exploited and I can keep, you know, getting paid a lot and living my well off, you know, um, petty bourgeois existence, you know? So that would pretty much lead, that would pretty much be, you know, the explanation of Engels' idea of the uh, labor aristocracy. I keep saying Lengels, I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah, that would pretty much wrap up the subject and wrap up the video as a whole. Thank you for watching. Thank you.